Hi there, my name is Daniel from Transcorn Trailer Sales. We're going to be walking through your 2023 Art Pod 180. We are just going to start off the back of the unit here. It's where you keep your spare tire, also where you have your license plate. Great to see you. Far back left. Uh, far left back hook corner, you will find your power cord. You just got that twist lock. Take a note of that notch there. It lines up with this notch on the trailer side. Giving that eighth turn. Once you push it in, and then just the threaded collar to really lock it down. And if you do follow that back, you have your standard 30 amp plug in. We do also include a 15 amp park adapter. Just keep it in mind you're only going down to 15 amps of power, so you won't be able to run something like your air conditioner. Whenever you do plug this plug in, you do have a green light and a red light. The green light's telling you you have a successful power cord, a power source, sorry. If you were to have a red light, that would just tell would just be telling you that you have an uh, issue with your power source and not your trailer. You also have a cable satellite in it, as well as the black tank flush. The way that black tank flush works is with your sewer hose connected and your black tank open, you hook a garden hose up to there, turn it on, it would just flush out that tank. Just if you were to have any false monitor readings or if you were to notice, start noticing a smell, it just gives it that rinse. And in this corner, as well as all four corners of the unit, you do have stabilizer jack. The way that works is you just hook that tool, which I'll show you in the front compartment, up to this uh, bolt here. You run that down to the ground, give it an eighth to quarter turn just to snug it up, and it's just going to take any bounce or sway you see we have in the unit right now away. Uh, right here, you do have your sewer outlet. The way that works is you just give that a twist, it's going to unlock. You got two ears. The same two ears are going to be on your sewer hose and they just connect up like so locking that in place just locks it in you got your black tank your gray tank your black tanks your dirtiest water so you're going to want to empty that first because that's filled from your toilets and then you got your gray tank which is filled from your sinks and showers and you can come behind that come after the black tank with that just rinsing out that hose trying to keep that less odor just in front of the tire you do have your little tube for your sewer hose just turning that notch opening this up there is a sewer hose included in here you can access this from both sides also and then you do have your low point drains right next to that let's say you're you're leaving the unit for a little for a while you don't want the water going stale or stagnant you can crack these guys open it's just gonna drain all the water you have inside the lines and then you do have your fresh water drain a little bit in front of that that's just gonna drain your fresh water tank you will notice you do have your furnace exhaust on this side. Whenever the furnace is running, you aren't gonna to wanna to block that because it does blow out hot air. And then you do have your fresh water fill as well as your city water connection. If you're out of sight with service, you can just plug garden hose up to your city water connection. There's no need to run your, hot wa uh, your water pump. And then if you open up this guy here, this is just your uh, water heater service port. You got your big drain bolt right on the bottom there. And then you have, I'm gonna go over a reset procedure inside. A button I refer to is just right here. And whenever you get to your campsite for the first time, you are just gonna to wanna to give this relief valve a pull and there should be a shot of water that comes out. This unit's winterized, so the tank's currently empty, so there's no water that, come up, that, that came out. If there were to ever be no water to come out, you wouldn't wanna fire that up because you run the risk of burning out the tank. This, this little black box here is where we house the battery. We don't have the cap on it right now just because the unit is winterized, so we're gonna be taking that battery out after this video is done. And then you do have your uh, battery disconnect switch right there with the battery disconnect switch on, the batteries are connected to the unit. And with the battery disconnect switch off, the batteries are disconnected from the unit. Underneath this little cover here, if you open this up, turn that valve on, that is just turning on propane to the unit. You can get this guy off just by taking off the one wing nut on the one side and sliding this cover off. You have your electric tongue jack in the front here. Hitting that button on the top is just going to turn a light on. And then you got your up and your down. And then you do have a manual override, which we include the tool for, right underneath this cap. Around the side of the unit here, if you open up this storage department, you notice you have this little garden hose attachment. It does connect just right here. You just take the two notches on this end and line them up with the notches on this end, push it in, twist, and it would lock into place, locking that in. 
And then you also do have your exterior barbecue. That works pretty simple as well. You got the mount right here. The way that would work is you just take this mount, you unfold those arms, and it would lock into the strap like so. Once that was locked in place, your barbecue would just slide over these these two uh, bars here, and then you just got your cotter pin, just lock it and lock that barbecue into place. Once that was all locked into place, you could just take your quick hose sewer connect, connect it to the back of the barbecue, and then just connect the uh, other end to the quick connect underneath the trailer. Whenever this valve is closed, you can use the coupler push it in and it locks into place turning on that flow of propane would allow propane to then flow through this line whenever the, the line is open it won't allow you to use the coupler just for an added safety feature so you do just have to close that and it'll pop right out keeping that stored away in the front compartment uh, a little further down the unit you do just have some more storage in the back here to get inside, you take that assist handle, push it up, fold it three degrees, it locks into place, and open up that door. Pull the stairs out, just grabbing that first bottom step and flipping over the top. You got your fire extinguisher right on the right, that's gonna be just like hold, hold, hit, and shoot. And then you do just have your interior lights and porch light on this panel here, turning on that amber light on the outside. And then you just have your awning LED switch right beside that. Followed with your slide out button. The way that slide out works, hit that button out. The slide out's gonna start making its way out. You know that slide out is fully extended. When you hear the motors wind up and cut out. So that's it, there's the slide out fully extended. Awning, you just hit that button, extend. The awning's gonna start making its way out. You're gonna know that awning's fully extended when you see the back of the metal tube and the little flap hang down. There you go, you got that back of the metal tube. Sometimes those flaps do get stuck, so you just gotta retract it and put it back out again, and it flaps down. Now you can take any arm, front to rear, and just push down, and it is gonna change the pitch of the awning head, allowing the water to then run off before it start raining. Now if you do like that angle better, you can do the same thing to the front arm, and it's gonna allow for more shade. So always making sure you pull it back to straight again before you bring it in, that way you don't run the risk of bending anything. Uh, you do have storage on this side here and then just inside this uh, door here is uh, your little bathroom with hot sink with hot and cold water inside here I will have to show you that you do your main GFI plug you got or sorry it's not in here but it normally is sink with hot and cold water storage underneath light switches on the right toilet with some storage in here on the wall here you do have your thermostat which is pretty simple if you hit that button once it's going to illuminate itself hit it again you're going to go into fan low so at this point you're just moving air with the air conditioner on a low fan same thing on high fan now you get to cool high so now the actual air conditioning part takes into effect hit it again it'll switch over to low fan one more time, you get to cool low auto. So now it becomes an on-demand system. So once your thermostat senses that it's a certain, whatever temperature you decide on in here, the air conditioner is gonna cut out and it'll cut in and out as needed. Same thing on a high fan. And then you just get to the heater option. Now, whenever you run that heater option, all, all the heat is just blown out from this main uh, panel right here. So if you were to wanna get a fan just to try and blow that heat around, it would be a good idea but it does just disperse all its heat out of that one vent. That being said, it is propane heat and stove. The stove runs off propane in this unit. Propane's heavier than air. This little LP detector is gonna detect it. If this guy ever starts going off, you are just gonna to wanna to turn off the main supply of propane to the unit at the front and open up some windows just to try and ventilate it. Uh, and then you do have your solar controller on this wall as well. 
not really much I gotta show you there other than the fact that you can change which battery type you're using. And you can also see what your amp draw is, amp hour reading, and the voltage that you're currently charging at. Uh, you got a sink with hot and cold water, and you got your stove. All you have to do to light that stove is turn that knob over to light, hit it with the lighter, and it should light right on up. You do have your uh, convection oven right below it. You do have a central vac in this unit. The pieces for that are inside this cupboard here. And then you do have like what's called a no, uh, no dustpan system where if you sweep everything in front of this, keep it in mind that it does go into a bag so you can't really sweep up anything too large. It's mainly just for dust or sand. If you lift that up, it's gonna turn it on and suck whatever's in front of it out. Uh, just one last thing I have to show you, right on this wall here, you do have your uh, fire exit. The way that works is you'll just take this screen, give it a pull, the screen will pop off. You can take this arm, pop it out of its holder, push it out, and you can hop out of the unit. At the front, you do have this nice window, which does open up as well. And then just right here on the ground, you got your main GFI plug with reset in the middle and test on the left. Or sorry, that's, yeah. Whenever that orange light's on, it's telling you the GFI is tripped. So you just have to hit that reset button if you ever have an outlet that doesn't work. That would be the first place I'd check. This unit also is equipped with solar panels as well as an inverter. So the way that inverter works is if you're not plugged in, you can hit this button unit. It's going to turn itself on. And essentially, it's just going to tell you all your statuses. There's a few settings that you can go through. And this inverter is just going to allow you to run off that solar power for a little bit longer. And just to turn it off, you're just holding that button whenever you're at this main DC status menu, and then it'll turn itself off. That's going to be it for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to get... Oh, sorry. And then you do have your Dometic fridge. That works pretty simple. You hit this power button on. It's going to turn itself on. Whenever this button is flush, it is going to run on auto. So it's going to first search for shore power and run off that. Once shore power is taking away, it'll switch over to gas. If you want it to run solely on gas, you just have to depress that button and it will fire up on gas and only gas inside. Open it up. You do have a temperature selector. It's this little white piece here. The higher you push that white piece up the fin, the colder it's gonna get. That's gonna be it for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.